Hi, let's continue with the more circle. In this case, we want to determine which, which the value of this angle theta here that makes my stress uh, the maximum that I can find in this application. To accomplish that, we know that we, if we want to know the term in the maximum of a, of a terming function like this here, or equation, uh, what we need to do is to take the derivative of that function here, so x, x prime with respect to theta, and put it equal to zero. The solution to this equation is going to give us those that maximum value that we're searching for, or maximum. Yeah. So if I do this, then the derivative of this function in the top is going to be equal to, uh, let's see, uh, this term is going to not going to give me anything because it's not uh, affected by the angle theta. But these two terms, this one here, and this, sorry, and the last one is this one here. It's going to give me something here. So the derivative of the first one is going to be, let's put it in this way, it's going to be 2 times this, the subtraction of these two stresses times the sine of 2 theta minus divided by 2. Then minus, again, 2 shear stress xy cosine of 2 theta. And this has to be equal to 0. Perfect. Now, one thing I can do is I can take these two and uh, sorry, this is a plus here. It's a plus here. These two and these other two take it as a common factor and then you know send it to the to the zero side and that's going to end up or my equation is going to be do and end up being sigma x x need to increase the pen of this one sigma, sigma x x minus yeah sigma y y negative if i divide to sine of two theta plus tau x y cosine of two theta equal to zero now, if we pay attention to this equation or this resultant equation, actually what it's saying is that, well, actually you are going to see that this equation here is similar to the one presented to the shear stress. And it means that uh, in the angle or the angle that produces the maximum normal stress, in that same angle, we're going to have zero shear stress because this one is equal to this one here. Well, now we need to know what makes this equation zero. So evidently, if we have a value for the normal stresses and we have a value for the shear stresses in, uh, in my normal plane, then I need to find out which angle makes this equation zero. I will try to separate this angle from or take this angle out of this equation to have what it gives then i can say that uh, actually if i change sides and put this i could say that the tangent of two theta meaning that sending kind of sending this to the other side first and then you know arranging terms is going to be equal to yeah to two times shear stress this guy here divided by sigma x minus sigma y then uh, the solution to this equation meaning which angle makes this uh, this um, this result zero 
uh, I'm going to have two solutions for this. So one is going to be at the determined angle theta, and the second solution is going to be the same kind of, it's kind of a, a prog progression of the angle or kind of, it's going to be also at an angle which is going to be with a, at a face or a, or a kind of, what's the word for that? It's going to be out of phase with this angle by a value of pi. Yeah. So these two solutions are going to, or these two values of the angles are going to provide me zeros in here. So one is going to give me the maximum and the other one is going, it could give me a minimum. So let's continue. Then the idea of kind of having this or, or trying to determine what's the value for the maximum normal stress lays into that I need to know what's the angle that produces that maximum normal stress. However, uh, I need to use the same equation here, but it doesn't make sense at this point that to try to figure out by this angle by just, you know, inputting values here. So I need to know what are the angles. Uh, for that. And to know that I need to do a little bit of manipulation that I will keep it short, but I will tell you how to do it. So I'm going to copy again the value or what's kind of what I'm searching for. So in this case, this sigma xx, that definitely this will become the maximum uh, normal stress. Let me call it, you know, the max. It has to be at an angle or a determined angle that I'm going to tell you how to get to it. So we need to modify a little bit this equation. So I'm going to have, this is going to be one half of this one here. Plus one half of this subtraction. Plus the shear stress. Yeah. Now the the next step here is find the value of the angle, input the angle in this trigonometric it's a relationship they call sine and sine, and then that would give me the equation uh, that is going to result in the maximum normal stress. You are going to see in the textbooks that that equation is, is given you know, right away. But how to come from this point here to the equation that is shown? The manipulation that is needed to be done is that we need to know, we need to find what is the value of cosine of, of 2 theta and what's the value of the sine of 2 theta in terms of this equation that we have just gotten from the derivative or, or differentiating. Uh, the other equation, uh, the yeah, the normal stress equation in an inclined plane. Let's see. Let's see what's the value of the these are, uh, for example, the the cosine of two theta. So if I wanted to get rid of the cosine of two theta, I need to put it in this form. So cosine. Let me change the color again. Cosine of two theta. I need to work with something. I need to relate it to what I have. So I will start by saying, or well, using the identity relationship. So that's the cosine squared of two theta plus the sine squared of two theta equals one. Now I can do a little bit of manipulation here and get out of these two terms, the cosine of two theta how to do that so I can say that well if I extract the cosine from that side so it's, this is going to get, end up being cosine square of 2 theta 1 because I took it from this place and then as I'm taking it from a place that it doesn't exist here so this I need to actually write it there so that's going to be sine square of 2 theta divided by cosine square of 2 theta equal to 1 so these two equations are equivalent. I will rewrite, uh, rewrite it again uh, better. So this is going to be cosine squared of 2 theta 
parenthesis 1 plus the tangent square of 2 theta equals 1. Good. So it means that cosine, the value that we're looking for, cosine square of 2 theta, it's going to be equal to 1 divided by 1 plus tangent tangent of square of 2 theta. Lastly, I can say that that cosine that I'm searching for is going to be equal to 1 divided by the square root of, again, 1 plus the tangent square of 2 theta. But notice that it has to be plus minus because that value could be positive or negative. Now, this is one of the values I was searching for. So I know how much is the cosine of 2 theta in a way that I can substitute this term here into this equation here. And also by having uh, the value of the tangent of 2 theta, then I would get rid of any relation with the angle theta, at, you know, at least. Now, similarly for the case of the sine of 2 theta, so I will have that, you know, I will start with the same trigonometric identity. That is going to be cosine square of 2 theta. Yes, plus sine square of 2 theta equals 1. Then I can say, I can extract the sine from both sides, and this is going to be equal to the sine square of 2 theta, upper parenthesis. So if I extract the sine from this, uh, actually, this is going to be end up being 1 divided by the tangent square of 2 theta plus 1. And that's equal to 1. Then, with a little bit of manipulation, then I can say that the sine square of 2 theta equals 2. Uh, let me see equals to, yes, I can send this, all of this to this side here. Yes. No, wait a second. Wait a second, I need to do first something. I'm just trying to make it, you know, at once, but this. let me take it step by step. So I can say that, let me delete this, so not to create confusion, is that I can keep working with this, the whole term, this whole term here. So this is going to be the sine square of 2 theta parentheses, and this is going to be, yes, 1 plus tangent square of 2 theta divided by tangent square of 2 theta. Kind of if I solve or execute this sum here. Yes, and this is going to be equal to 1. Now I can make it easier to say that sine square of 2 theta equals to what? To the denominator going to be the tangent square of 2 theta divided by 1 plus tangent square of 2 theta. Great. Now if I square everything, square root everything in, in both sides, I will end up having that the sine square of 2 theta Actually, I said that I was going to root square it. And this is going to be in the denominator. Yeah. 
tangent to theta divided by again plus minus 1 plus tangent square of 2 theta great so I got the second value I needed to get rid of the geometric or the cosine and sine in this part here and this part here now I have equation for the cosine and the equation for the cosine is in the function if it's in function of the tangent equation for the sine is again in function of the tangent and then I also have the value of the tangent so I can get rid of all of that angle theta this is with a little bit of extra manipulation that I won't show here because it's going to take time but I would post it uh, it's going to end up having this formula that you all know or you will recognize in the textbooks that it says that the maximum uh, normal stress or the principal stress is going to be equal to this here so it's going to be equal to the subtraction of the normal stresses in the original orientation plus minus the square root of this term here again subtraction by the by 2 square plus shear stress yes and then we're going to see that uh, this is going to represent kind of where the center this is going to well actually the the, the whole idea of the of the more side circle is that it is a circle and that circle is defined completely by the the normal and shear the normal stresses and shear stress in the original orientation so we got to this point and i will call this equation equation let's see what was the last one it was equation five so i'm going to call, I'm going to call it equation six equation six and we will do the same but now for the uh, maximum shear stress but i will cut the video and then start in the next video explaining what's happening with the uh, maximum shear stress and then we can jump into drawing the morse circle again okay uh, thanks a lot